You can always count on Dingo Pictures to try and make even the worst adaptation look good in comparison to theirs. should have just stuck with their stupid animal-based movies because those were creepy enough. But get ready for Dingo's idea of what humans look like. It's scary. This movie also had a PlayStation release with the usual crap slider puzzle and flood fill coloring, which is almost a given at this point, but there were a few Dingo movies that didn't get this treatment. It came to pass many hundreds of years ago that the story of Quasimodo and the lovely Esmeralda unfolded here in Paris. Every time I think I'm prepared for Dingo's non-quality shit, they lower the bar! Even in those days, Paris was a great city. It was the greatest children's marker drawing and earned its spot on the fridge. Actually, even that is too high a praise for this trash. If a kid drew this, they'd get a note saying, we can't waste valuable fridge space on this, try harder. It's also rather jarring in this one when it cuts from their watercolor slash marker backdrops to their flat colored ones. Just so you can have a taste of both sides sides of the horrid backdrop coin, I suppose. <laughs> I'm done! I forgot, I hate myself far too much to allow me to get away that easily. We're just a minute into this, but we've already discovered Dingo's magic with their human characters, and that's zooming their heads in and out. With animals, they move their heads up and down, but humans don't do that, they do this. Ah! Holy Mary. Ah! Anyway, I'll just calmly cut off my scream. I am sure that it's a sin to look upon this child. Well, this nun just learned the most important part of being a phony Christian, and that's being a judgmental asshole. And really, nunster, you're one to talk. Actually, anyone in this movie is one to talk. You're all ugly, creepy fox. This, my dear sister, is no child but a misshapen ape. I'm seriously a woman. Listen to me. Wait, are we joined together? What the damn hell are we? It can't be Christian. Probably not. I don't think a lot of babies have particularly strong feelings on religion. It should be thrown into the fire. It belongs on a great big fire. And speaking of fire, you two are fucking fired and banned from ever looking at children again. This baby can't be Christian because it's ugly. So let's do the Christian thing and start a baby fire. Mm, I think I'll adopt it and take it with me. Pedophile priest joke. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see whether I can teach him to speak and think. Whether he can learn to love and hate. I assume it can. You don't know if there's anything really wrong with it besides it apparently being uglier than the rest of you, which in my view is highly debatable. I've always said that that Claude Frollo is a warlock and a spellmeister. Truly, there is nothing more warlocky than wanting to adopt a baby. But wow, Frollo is actually the Archdeacon of Notre Dame? This is the first adaptation I've seen that actually kept him in this position like the book, and it's the fucking Dingo Pictures one? You use this little monster to assist him in his experiments. His experiments of what? Being an evil church dude? I'll call him Quasimodo. It's Latin and means... 
on it, more or less. You two gonna make out, or you just really don't believe in personal space? <laughs> oh, yes, thank you, Dingo. I didn't think the awkward walking in silence was going on long enough. A few years later, Claude Frollo became Abbe of Notre Dame. Okay, Frollo has risen all the way to Abbe, which is the title for a lower-ranking Catholic clergyman. Frollo's baby adoption experiments have taken him all the way to the bottom. Though based on Douchey Moto's appearance, by a few years they apparently meant at least 17 or so. It seems this evil raising of a baby really agreed with Frollo. Then again, the asswipe joined at the hips nuns are doing pretty well too. Probably from breathing in all the fumes from their baby fires. The citizens of Paris couldn't stand Quasimodo. Ah, so it wasn't like they had a fear of him or anything. It was just annoyance. Oh, look at that Quasimodo! What a douche! I never knew Colonel Sanders used to be a pimp in medieval France. He should lock Quasimodo up in a tower. I don't dare put my foot outside the door at night. Wait, what the shit is this? You're the exact same person as Baby Fire Nun number one. You just put on a different outfit to agree with yourself, didn't you? She truly was a trailblazer for people who like and agree with their own comments on YouTube. Skip, skip, skip to Malou, skip, skip, skip to Malou, I don't have a proper walk cycle. Watch out, Quasi, that rope isn't attached to anything. Huh, oh no, now you're cutting your own head off. Well, that wraps that up. Ah, oh, shit. This one, for whatever reason, has a large amount of garbage area visible, so you'll often see characters getting cut off or backgrounds from different shots underneath the scene. Dingo Pictures always lowering the bar. The Bells became his best friend. I gotta apologize to the Seeker of the Hunchback again! At least the rocks he was friends with in that one looked like some type of creature and pointlessly sang medieval jazz sometimes, instead of best bell friend loser over here. You are my favorite, Mogri. Does this bell need an adult? Or a restraining order? Quasimodo may be a monster, but no one can ring the bells as beautifully as him. And a lesson was truly learned. Is it true he's gone deaf from the noise? <laughs> yes, that's true. Oh, we're back to the classic up and down bouncing heads. Guess zooming is just for crying. And fuck you, Pimp Sanders. You think it's funny he went deaf just because he got way too up and personal with the bells? Uh, yeah, maybe it's kind of funny. It was Marie, the deep bass bell that had ruptured Quasimodo's eardrum. Stop enabling his bell fetish, narrator! But... As Quasimodo didn't talk to anyone anyway, it wasn't too bad. I kinda screwed that up, but it's good enough. Just like Quasimodo going death. That ain't the narrator's problem. He could still feel the vibration of the bells, and that was enough to keep him happy. <laughs> Gross. Quasimodo was about 20. Oh, he's about 20 now. They probably aged their appearances at the... <laughs> of course they didn't. They still all look the same. And this is a wondrous festival where assholes throw knives at ducks. Though if it's the damn sexy duck narrator from Dinosaur Adventure, it's justified. Then we meet Esmeralda in drag. Oh, wait. That's Pierre. My my bad, he looks nothing like Esmeralda. Just wow, guys. See, 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 so buddies, come ye all, here, come ye all, here. Vote for the Pope of Zeus. 
Is this even English anymore? And why the hell is there a medieval beatnik? This is what I've been waiting for. Do you remember last year, remember? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last year when we also stood around laughing at jokes that weren't explained. <laughs> <laughs> Art is understood by no one here. What's the matter with me? Beatnik Idiot says something else that I can't understand even slightly, but apparently they are crowning the main fool of Fool's Day by having them stick their heads through a hole. Frank and Ernie's monster here doesn't win, but a donkey in the audience does think he's hilarious. But of course, Evil Experiment Baby wins. <laughs> That's Quasimodo! I couldn't recognize him without seeing his body! Mmm, Quasimodo's hot, hot body! He's the best pope of fools we've ever had! And death too! What the hell does that have to do with anything, Colonel Pimpers? Stop bringing it up, you jackass! Let's show him to the people of Paris! Off to Place Grève! Just, what the shit is this perspective? Is Pierre about to lean up against the vertical street behind him? Ooh, nice dance, Esmeralda. It's like they saw that damn one they couldn't stop showing in the Golden Films version and said, Oh yeah? We can do that with even less frames! In fact, we'll just do a horizontal flip. Amazing. I dedicate my next poem to her. Who is she? Glad Pierre is just as superficial as ever, though this time I at least know what he sees in her. Himself. Don't you know her? She's Esmeralda. She came with the gypsies, you know? I might be slightly drunk. Why do I eat up so much screen time? This dance makes Frollo mad because people are now paying more attention to Esmeralda's body instead of the body he put all those years of experiments into. May I introduce Jolly, the smartest goat in the world? It really is smart. I've never seen an animal randomly laugh in a dingo picture before. Jolly, how late is it? <laughs> wow, that goat is right. It really is. <laughs> oh, clock. And this is witchcraft. And there's only room for warlock baby adopters in this city. Which is not only lovelier than the Bible allows. There's a hotness limitation in the Bible? I'll forbid her to perform. Unless she gives me diamonds, yes. If you enjoyed the performance, people of Paris, show your generosity with a few sous in my basket. What exactly is my accent? Am I French or Italian? Who knows? Witch. <gasps> and you've bewitched the goat, too. No normal animal behaves that way. I mean, it was over there making goat noises, completely unlike a goat. And I haven't seen an animal laugh like that since the donkey in the crowd over there. Esmeralda has sandals that like to go MIA depending on what position she's standing in. But hey, at least she gets footwear sometimes. Oh, Esmer Melody had to even do her stupid wedding barefoot. Damn you, you gypsy daughter! <gasps> Don't be afraid of the crazy old lady. Many years ago, her child was stolen by a gypsy. I'm Pierre. I know the backstory of random old women who yell out their windows. Quasimodo comes by to perv on Esmeralda too, but it's far less flattering to her because it's not like looking into a mirror with him. He can't hear you, he's deaf. Also, Pierre, of course, knows everything about Quasimodo as well. Quasimodo! You is the Pope of Fools! You is the Pope of Fools. Yep, that about sums things up. Beware, Esmeralda. 
He we live in a bad time. He we live in a bad time. Something he we all should keep in mind. Pierre knows things used to be better back in the good old days. This is Orodacta Scientist Dinosaur. Pierre, perhaps you are here for my new theory on science. Actually, I wasn't. He stayed. So good to talk to you. No, no, Sir Poet. It's late already. Maybe some other time. Mm, I think Esmeralda likes me. Yeah, the way she ran off to avoid having to continue talking to you must mean she likes you. What the garbage is this shit? How do you guys continue to manage to make this crap look even worse? I'll never find her in this maze of alleys. She walked straight. I walked straight. What a maze. I'm sure that she has a nice hot soup. That noise is old cell phone interference with recording equipment. That would happen sometimes when people would get a call near my old 8mm camera. So of course that's in this movie. Only time for one take. Just one shoe, sir. Or perhaps two. Leave me alone. I've got nothing myself. I saw a piece of bread. Give me enough of bread! Your voice sounds somewhat familiar, you dirty bum. You must be... Dead Wushan. <laughs> uh, give me a soul! Give me a piece of bread! I'll be damned. A one-legged man chasing me on two legs? I'll be damned if I know what's going on anymore. The Wah-Bum chases Pierre over to the bad side of town, where I think they might be filming Dingo's Aladdin, and two mustache men are about ready to get it on. Also, we learn that tree houses were very popular in medieval France, as this isn't even the only one shown. I'll be damned, an honorable citizen in the Court of Miracles. <laughs> <laughs> the Court of Miracles actually was what the slums of Paris were referred to back when, but I highly doubt they recruited doofuses to be thieves just because they happened to wander in. There's only one solution for you. Join the gypsies and beggars, and you'll be safe. I'll do anything to save my skin. You must prove that you are worthy of belonging to us. Bring the bellman. He has a purse in his pocket. If you can get it without one bell ringing, you belong to us. If not, then the gallows. Well, their recruiting process seems reasonable enough. Ha ha ha, they're going to kill me. If only Pierre had had Raphael around to do this for him. Oh well, I'm glad he didn't. Fuck Pierre. Hang him. <laughs> to the gallows with him. What lovely people. They love killing. Destiny, take your course. You want to hang him? Yes, unless you take him to be your man. Ah, the loophole in the court of bullshit. Hang his ass. What do you think? Okay, pass. My goat thinks he's too funny. He's your man for four years. Ugh, harsh sentence by the Court of Miracles. So what happens after four years? Does he explode? You haven't by any chance fallen a tiny little bit in love with me, have you? No, Pierre. I don't even know you. Why is it Esmeralda is more level-headed in the Dingo version versus her instantly being in love with Pierre in Secret of the Hunchback or Quasimodo in The Handsome of Notre Dame? I don't know where my parents are. You seem to be full of secrets. <laughs> I could support our income by reciting new verses like That was Esmeralda and her goat. Put coins in the hat or I'll go for your throat. <laughs> Don't be angry, Marie. I just want to watch Esmeralda dance. He is seriously asking a bell not to be jealous of his new crush. Oh dear, secret of the hunchback. Fuck. 
Everyone gets scared when Quasimodo suddenly flips and zooms in despite the background not changing. At least I assume that's why they all freak out, because they're all fine with partying it up with him when he is the Pope of Fools. I was a witness, my sheriff. I sentenced him to 20 lashes and an hour in the stocks. Man, Count Paul Schaefer is a dick. Though still, I suppose this is more fair than don't ring a bell or we'll kill you! Unless a woman wants you as a pet for four years. Medieval France sure a strange law system. Ooh, I'm a pirate! Why am I here? Take him out immediately now! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> horrible things happening are always a laugh around here! Unless these people all die, this movie isn't gonna have a satisfying ending. Spoiler, prepare to be disappointed. Well, I can also say about this dingo version is they don't shy away from showing Quasimodo getting his lashes. Some good old red line blood action here. And it's really nice to see an executioner who loves his job, unlike old Depresso in the Golden Films one. Though this guy might just be really happy because he forgot to wear his pants to fucking work again and got away with it. Luckily, some water fish fixes everything. And I mean everything, even Quasimodo's shirt recovers. But old Biddy in the window isn't impressed. If only Esmeralda could avoid her by not walking in front of her window. Oh, nice of the Eiffel Tower to finally cameo in one of these Hunchback of Notre Dame stories, even though it wouldn't be built for about another 400 years. Jolly and Pierre had become good friends in the meantime. See Seen here, the attempted ramming of a good friend. Your honor. Thanks for the literal dickhead, Dingo. That's disgusting. She's very beautiful. You see, she's bewitched you too, your honor. I'm here to accuse her of witchcraft. I'm also here to catch up on my lines. You know, despite these silly line reads like this, this, this really is one of the better English dubs for a dingo movie as far as sinking is concerned. This must have been an earlier movie before dingo got really big headed and realized that everyone would watch their crap no matter how lazily it was shit together. Yes, yes, I know we haven't had a witchcraft trial in ages. But I know my voice is ridiculous, so let's do it! <laughs> She's a pretty good tap dancer for someone not wearing shoes. I arrest you and your goat. Oh, you'll never make the charges stick on that goat. Not only do they want to turn Esmeralda into a witch, they want to turn my jolly into a devil. <gasps> Of course, you didn't understand anything. He didn't understand. That's why he gasped. Making things logically flow is hard. We call a nun, Sister Joanna, into the witness stand. Your Honor. Ah! Damning testimony, if I've ever heard any. Not only that, she had the goat and let it do things that no Christian animal can. Oh, yes, Christian animal. That makes sense. Yes, that's what she did, that... <gasps> she awkwardly cut dialogue off. Why, that is just not done. Isn't that right? It is not done. Bring in the second accused. <sighs> They played the wah-wah, so we knew that calling in a goat to testify was silly. Not quite as silly as passing out due to overwhelming pain, but it's up there. Let us begin the cross-questioning of the goat. <gasps> this is too stupid even for me. Of course you don't even understand that they're trying to get testimony from a goat. What time is it? <laughs> That's right! 
It's three o'clock. The judge is a warlock. He communicates with animals. Hug him! <laughs> Most of the people in this court are so stupid. How does the Bishop of Paris speak? <laughs> That's right! I say we appoint this goat the new Pope! You is the Pope of Fools! Jenny, stop! You're damning yourself! This goat is smart enough to answer these questions, but doesn't realize that it shouldn't. Ugh, and this movie was so close. There is no shadow of a doubt that the accused is a witch. The gypsy and her goat are hereby condemned to death. You is the court of fools. <laughs> Why is it that the actual court is even more asinine than bum court? Aw, oh, poor Esmeralda. If only her goat didn't make noises. But this is a pretty sad scene. Until we randomly cut to fat rats watching it. Not really the time, dingo. I ask you for the last time to forsake all evil. Evil. I've done nothing. So die. <laughs> Laughing at people doomed to death. It's the Christian thing to do. Luckily for Esmeralda, Quasimodo has teleporting powers as he was at the top of the bell tower a second ago, but suddenly he appears down below muttering something about asylum and just carries her off. In the wrong direction from the church, but that's what teleporting's for, and apparently no one could stop this, so that's that. It's almost like this is a stupid world where Goat's testimony is valid in a court of law. Listen, Quasimodo, I... Don't say anything. I can't understand you anyway. That could be said about half of the characters in this thing, including you. <laughs> oh man, who would have thought the evil church guy might find Esmeralda in the church? Luckily, Quasimodo gave the goat a rape whistle, though. Esmeralda whistled for help, and I will protect her. Damn you both. What the hell is going on here? Oh, Quasimodo, what now? Wow, Dingo. Wow. I promise you, as long as I live, nothing will happen to you. He even threatened me, his lord and master. Yes! That's unbelievable! This whole movie is unbelievable! Oh, what the damn hell is that, Dingo? Oh well, it's a new take on their head bopping. The court of assholes decide while Esmeralda's situation is apparently hilarious, they should go save her, but Quasimodo is a dummy and starts throwing Lego bricks at them. Which I guess was Frollo's plan? He's too stupid. Well, Glasses Pirate with the print t-shirt sure took that well. Yep, print t-shirts were totally a thing in the medieval period. What a load. Quasimodo, it's... it's me, Pierre. Oh, it's Pierre! While Quasi Kong throws his barrels, Frollo decides he'll just take Esmeralda off for a little impromptu hanging, which she just goes along with him for. But Frollo forgot to use the bathroom, so he leaves Esmeralda in the care of someone even more powerful, Angry Window Woman. This is all I have left of my child. Look, look at these two. You? You're my daughter? What a coincidence! Glad Esmeralda always had her baby shoe on her person, just in case! Flee as long as you can! What about you? My life is almost done. My only regret is I wish I could have spent more time yelling at people outside my window! Esmeralda, where is she? She's escaped, but I could explain it to you at least five times. You wouldn't even understand it the sixth time. <laughs> you killed her! 
What kind of diet was Frollo on? That was amazing. Leave it to Dingo to actually have some of the darker moments from the book like this, but then put a doofy twist on it like Frollo apparently being as light as a feather. Quasimodo was taken to the same cell that Esmeralda had been in before. Somebody handed this in for you. Now Quasimodo didn't care what happened to him. Esmeralda, the only person who had ever mattered to him, was safe. Truly, uh... Happy ending? Esmeralda basically just sent Quasimodo a note saying, We will avenge you, my friend. Esmeralda decided to move on with Pierre and Jolly and leave Paris behind them, because there was nothing to keep them there anymore. So they just leave them to rot in jail. It was Esmeralda's time for a dick move. <laughs> Wow. Some might say this is a happier ending than the book where they both die, but I don't know about that. Esmeralda kinda heel turned on us big time at the end here, but at least the goat said a few words in his defense. <laughs> Looks like we can pin just about every crime in Paris on Quasimodo! This court is so stupid. <laughs> so while on a technical side, Dingo's Hunchback is way worse than Golden Films is, it's still a much more faithful adaptation of the story than The Handsome of Notre Dame. How sad is that? <laughs> Any final thoughts? Most of Fantasy's reviews are so stupid. <laughs>